Sao Paulo gave us the last weekend of spring qualifying, a new format that we have trialed with F1 this year. It is actually very useful to do the spring qualifying format for race preparation itself. Because although the cars in park for May on Friday, on Saturday morning we have a free practice session, FP2, in which we devote the whole time to high field running. So we actually do very, two very long runs on both medium and soft tires, and we get a very good picture of how the tires behave at that track. Coming to Brazil, we knew already that the weather was going to be a big factor. We started with a Friday that was cold and drizzly to a Saturday that was halfway housed to a Sunday that was very hot. So while we were learning about the tires as the weekend went on, we were always mindful that come Sunday, the track temperature would be much hotter than the rest of the weekend. To get ready for this, we believed it was, it was going to be a two-stop race in any case, and we brought plenty of mediums and hard tires. We had two new mediums and one new hard tire to be able to do what we believe was the most efficient two-stop race. Uh, we did very good long runs in FP2, and uh, so we understood what the tire life was. Uh, we, we had that under wraps, and we came into the race under no illusion that very, very likely it was going to be a two-stop race for us. But we never ruled out some of our competitors would try the one-stop race. So we had to gear up to be able to overtake anyone that would stay out at a one-stop race with our two-stop race. At this uh, 45, 50 degrees track temperature that we had, it was very difficult for us to make a tire last 30, 35 laps, which is what you need for a one-stop race. But in the first stint of the race, we found that we had around four laps of safety car followed by another virtual safety car. These laps actually give the tires a bit of a breathing space. They cool down, they don't wear down as much as on a normal lap. So it was a bit luring to think, okay, well, with so many safety cars and virtual safety cars, maybe the tire doesn't do 30 laps, but with safety cars, maybe it does. This made us toy with the idea of doing a one-stop race. But very quickly, we realized that for the one-stop race, we would have to count on the same amount of safety cars happening on the second part of the race. So we quickly dismissed that idea and went back to our main plan, which was to stop medium, medium hard. We saw some of our competitors attempting the one-stop race and we were ready to overtake them on the last sprint for the race. So having two, two drivers close to each other has some advantages and some disadvantages. The advantage is that we can try and fight with two cars, one car, as we did in Mexico. The disadvantage is that we're, we, when we are under threat, we cannot piss off both cars at the same time, not on the same lap, because the second car would, uh, would pay a penalty. So we had to make sure that we had our cars spaced out by at least three seconds, and we had to make sure that our lead car had enough gap to stop two laps later than our opponent. So in this case, Gasly stopped on lap 25, and we had already planned out that Carlos, which was our trail car, was three seconds ahead of Gasly, and Charles, which was our lead car, was another three seconds ahead of Carlos. This allowed us to first stop trail car and then lead car. This is quite a tricky situation because if there's something goes wrong in the pit stop, we actually swap our cars, which is something we don't want to do. Our approach to pit stops this season has been to be very consistent. We have not tried to be the fastest pit stops because our goal is to have repetitive pit stops. And as you can see on the last two events, by keeping our same philosophy of doing consistent pit stops, we have achieved the fastest pit stop of the race. And we managed to do four very good pit stops uh, yesterday.